My name is Marek Zemrak and I'm a gameplay producer at Celebrate Red. Yeah. And today together with Bartek von Ochman, a QA analyst, we will be uh, preparing a presentation or showing you the gameplay of The Witcher 3. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, I'll talk about this in a second. No recording is uh, allowed, please. Okay, before we start, a uh, few technical things. Uh, first of all, the presentation will take around 45 minutes. On your seats, you should find a survey uh, and a small gift, a uh, digital version, I think, of, uh, I think that's which one and which two. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, that's a very good beginning. Now, I must inform you again that no recording is allowed, because this guy will come of course. and get you. Of course. Yeah, okay, uh, I'm aware that uh, not all of you might be familiar with The Witcher 3 concept or with our previous games, so we will start with a short introduction uh, about who The Witcher is and what The Witcher is all about. Okay, so first of all, Geralt of Rivia is our main protagonist. He's a witcher, which means he's a professional monster slayer. As a child, he was uh, trained and mutated to become an ultimate monster slaying machine. Well, Geralt is also one of the most favorite witchers, described in a series of uh, best-selling novels created by a famous Polish fantasy author, Andrzej Sapkowski. I can keep on talking about Geralt a lot, because uh, I know a lot about him, but I guess an image is worth more than a thousand words. So right now, this is a good moment to move to a short CG about Twitchers. The CG has been prepared uh, by a uh, Polish, uh, Polish CG studio, Platyge Image, and uh, Tomasz Baginski, BAFTA Award winner, Academy Award nominee. Okay, enough talking, let's see. There you go, I love it. <laughs> Enjoy the beer. For the murder of the wounded, looting, cannibalism, you are hereby sentenced to death by hanging. Or torment. about The Witcher, now let me quickly introduce you to the concept or to the story behind The Witcher Saga. Of course, the storyline is the most important element of the game because after all we're creating an RPG game. Well, uh, we already created two parts of the game, Witcher 1 and Witcher 2. It's very hard to explain what happened in those parts if you did not play them. But there's good news, you don't have to play Witcher 1 and Witcher 2 to fully understand Witcher 3 and then enjoy the game. Why is this? Because at the end of The Witcher 2, a huge war is starting. The Empire of Nilgard is once again attacking the Northern Kingdoms, the ones we were roaming around uh, at. 
Okay, and this is a very massive change, dramatic change in the world setting. The slate basically has been wiped clean. The once mighty who tried to use Geralt are gone, and now he can embark on a new, much more personal journey. But the Empire of Nilgard is not the only threat. There is also the White Hunt. These are those ghastly spectral warriors who basically create misery wherever they appear. They were believed to be a mere legend, but now they prove to really exist. So they appear in different parts of the world, and they will greatly affect the main storyline in The Witcher 3. Actually, if we move right now to the gameplay, we'll be able to see those Wild Hunt guys attacking one of the villages in Skellig area. Okay, let's hit the gameplay. Okay, so I did not mention yet that this is still a pre-alpha build, and it does not represent the final quality. I did not ex expect that I would have to mention this this early, but it happens sometimes. But have no worries, we have two computers, we have different builds. Okay, three minutes. Three minutes of talking coming right away. <laughs> Okay, so let's say we'll be talking a bit about the world of The Witcher 3. That's a massive one, and right now in the presentation, in a second, we'll be focusing or we'll be playing in an area called Skellige. Skellige area is an archipelago of seven islands, um, each of them very interesting, and it's based on a Celtic and Nordic mythology. But in the full game, we're um, introducing many, a huge variety of different areas, like for example, no man's lands, which are war-ravaged territories full of murky swamps, dark forests, little cottages, and these territories are um, inspired by the Slavic mythology, so something that's really close to our culture. On the other hand, there are also those uh, big cities, especially in the north or on the coast of this world. Uh, Novigrad is a perfect example of one of those cities, and this, these cities are often inspired by Western European cities, medieval cities like Amsterdam, for example. So Novigrad is inspired by Amsterdam. It's a very colorful and rich city, but it's also very corrupt. So uh, the story back there will look totally different than, for example, in Skellige, uh, or in No Man's Land, or in different areas. How are you doing? Okay, keep on talking. <laughs> I got this. So another element worth mentioning, obviously in Witcher 3, and we will have a chance to see it in a second, is the combat system. The combat system is... Uh, if you managed to play the previous games, you probably already know that Geralt, as a mutant, is uh, a superb uh, sword fighter. He can, use, uh, he can use his weapon in a very cool way, and effective way. He can also use magical signs, uh, basic magic, magical spells called signs, and he can use alchemy to further increase his skills. In The Witcher 3, we're creating this uh, blend of a traditional RPG experience based on stats and different skills with a dedicated fighting game, which is a very uh, dynamic and, and, I guess, uh, controllable by your moves. So this time, uh, in, uh, it's a difference if you compare it to The Witcher 2, for example. One strike or one hit of a button means one strike of Geralt. So you have the full control over Geralt Blades, which allows you to control the battlefield even in an even better way. You have new dodge and parry options, which is also very cool, and you can use different, different types of attacks to create your own tactics in combat. Okay, right now, no. presenting Witcher 3, <laughs> starting with a cutscene about what I want.
so we are in Skellige. As I said, this is a pre-alpha build. It does not represent the quality of the final game. And it's also not the very beginning of the story of The Witcher 3. We just chose one particular quest to be able to show you a few elements of gameplay that we are introducing in The Witcher 3. We are on our way to Krak. He's our old friend. And a guy who might possess some more knowledge about the wild hunt and the recent attack on one of the villages of Skellige. This is uh, one of the islands of the Skellige Archipelago. It's actually the biggest one. And it's worth noting that this island alone is bigger than the whole world of Witcher 2. So uh, the game is uh, quite big. Okay, we as a development studio have over 10 years of experience in creating RPG games. Uh, while creating Witcher 1, we were learning how to deliver high-quality, mature RPG games. Witcher 2 allowed us to further polish our storytelling skills, evoking emotions, creating a non-linear storyline. In The Witcher 3, the story is still the most important element. That's why we're producing or iterating over many features that allow us to create this feel-like experience. What do you seek? Geralt of Rivia. I'm a witcher. I come at the behest of Jarl Crate. Welcome to Kerr's Road, Master Geralt. Greetings, White Wolf. You took your sweet time coming. I was hunting a fork tail. Udelric paid good coin for its head. Udelric! <laughs> that tight-fisted bastard. Probably haggles like a fishmonger's wife. But we're not talking the stables. Come. I shall tell you why I summoned you. You've no doubt heard about Dalvik. The <coughs> whole village burned to ashes. Its inhabitants gone. Another border skirmish with Madman Lugos? Nay. The sole survivor claims it was raids. The wild hunt on a raid. Where is this survivor now? His name's Bjorn. Lost his child in Dalvik. Now he lives with his brother in Ferun. I'll talk to him. Could be over the shock by now. Foul times are upon us. Always took the wild hunt for a dark vision, a, a nightmare that fades with the rising sun. Gotta go to Fairland. If the hunt's been there, I might find something that'll get me back on its trail. I was hoping you'd stay for the evening feast. As the years go by, fewer and fewer mates will join me for a drink and some old war stories. Another time, Crack. Need to talk to Bjorn as soon as possible. In that case, Godspeed. And remember, you'll always be welcome in my home. Okay, so please bear in mind that this is a still working progress version of the dialogue <laughs> system. But it already looks much better than the one presented in Ultra 2. Because we've increased the amount of bones in each character faces, face, uh, we're trying to deliver, as I said, this film-like experience. This is why we're trying to make it as easy as possible for the players Where to see Hulk the Black Hands emotions of the character faces. We managed to get some more information about the main storyline. We know we have to travel to Fernand, and it's somewhere back there in the island. Okay, as I said, the storyline might be the most important element of the Witcher 3, but the most important new addition to this version of the game is the open world. The open world is absolutely massive. It's over 35 times bigger than the one presented in the Witcher 2, so uh, it's basically a uh, lot. But it's not about the size, it's about the intensity. So, intensity and density of different events. This world is a unique blend of main storyline, side quests, and different encounters spread out throughout the whole world. Just like in the previous installments, of course this world is a home to living communities. These living communities 
are really having pursuing their own agendas. These guys here have their own thing. You know, Come on, We're trying to create a realistic, coherent world that is not just you know waiting for you as a hero to come and save them or interact with them. Of course, you may interact with the communities in many different ways. You can trade items with merchants. You can uh, ask craftsmen to prepare new items for you. But these guys really have their own vice. They travel, they work, they sleep, they own properties. And this is helping us in building a very coherent experience. We're also introducing a new uh, economy system. That's a quite simple thing, but quite cool to do. Basically, the price of items in different areas is different, depending on the amount of those goods produced in the area. So for example, if you want to buy fish and you want to do it cheap, it's good if you do it on the seaside, uh, but maybe bear hide can be cheaper in the mountains because that's where bears are and then a lot of hunters village. So you can abuse the system a little bit to even earn some extra cash and buy maybe new items. Okay, so the world is so massive that we had to introduce new ways of traveling through the world. Horse is one of those, sailboat is another option, but you can also swim, you can also jump, you can climb uh, different mountains, basically you're totally free to explore the world. This time there are no artificial barriers. Now another new element introduced in The Witcher 3 is fast travel. Fast travel allows you, just like in other games, to travel to different points on the map. This is just the map of the Skellige Archipelago. But of course, the whole world is much bigger. Uh, you can travel only to the points you've unlocked previously uh, in a very conventional way. That's a traditional solution, I guess. So, we've teleported ourselves into a village, one of the fishermen's villages down here.